where is recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. Disregard and contempt for human rights have resulted in barbarous acts which have outraged the conscience of humankind and the advent of a world in which human beings shall enjoy freedom of speech, belief and freedom from fear. It is essential if man is not to be compelled to have recourse as a last resort to rebellion against tyranny and oppression. Human rights should be protected by rule of law, whereas it is essential to promote the development of friendly relations between nations. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. Everyone has the right to life, liberty and security of person. No one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Everyone has the right to education. No one shall be subjected to torture or cruel, inhumane or degrading treatments or punishments. All are equal before the law and are entitled without discrimination to equal protection of the law. Everyone has the right to freedom of movement and residence within the borders of each state. No one should be subjected to arbitrary arrest detention or exile. Everyone is entitled in full equality to a fair and public hearing by an independent and impartial tribunal. Everyone has the right to work and to free choice of employment. Everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. Hi, I'm Malak and I'm Palestinian. Palestinians don't even have proper access to education. Instead of crossing the street 500 metres to reach their school, they are forced to walk, uh, to walk around the apartheid wall, which uh, can be up to kilometres in distance. The basic necessities, such as food, water and electricity that we take for granted, they don't have access to it. They don't have freedom of movement whenever they want to express themselves, whenever they want to protest and say, we are under oppression, they are oppressed even more. My grandparents were... Um, were evacuated from their homes in, during the 1948 war that Israel began. And then the 1990 war occurred uh, in Kuwait and we had to move to Australia for a better, looking for a better future. Hi, I'm Yang Chen, I'm Tibetan. It was year 2000 when me and my mom and my uncle started to come to India. We walked for 49 days and then we reached Nepal. In our journey, we came across a lot of um, yeah. In Tibet, there's no human rights. We're not even allowed to learn our own language. In schools, all the textbooks um, used to be in Tibetan, but now they all changed it into Chinese. We're not allowed to practice our Buddhist faith. They're not allowed to keep the Dalai Lama's photos on the wall or in their house. In 2009, we arrived in Australia. My mom doesn't speak English and I do a little bit. At school, um, I was the only Tibetan and there were Chinese people who, um, like, who were really mean to me and stuff. One of the challenges is for the Australian to understand Tibet's problem. In my future, I want to participate in every political movement, not only for Tibet, but for every other country who are suffering from lack of human rights. Hi, I'm Amadi. I'm from Sierra Leone. I came into Australia as a refugee. That was in 2004. And um, as I've just pretty much war breakouts in 1990 and um, rebel forces rebelling against the legitimate government, they accuse the governments um, of corruption, that the government is not managing the, um, the country fund properly. Their ideology that they have was that um, you know, the civilians are the ones that actually votes, voted for the legitimate government. So what they do is they will cut um, limbs and um, you know, limbs and, um, you know, fingers and things like that in order to stop the civilians from voting from the government. In 1999, war broke up again and um, the same thing happened, you know, and at the time we have to leave the country because of um, fear for our lives. I was very fortunate that I got picked up on the Australian one and um, in 2004 I relocated to Australia. Most of the my community cannot speak English, you know, and that creates a barrier, you know, and I think one of the major things the government has to do is providing interpreters, in other words, for these people to feel much more at home and also maybe to sponsor community organization because I remember when I first came into this country, you know, I was completely lost, you know, I think maybe creating an educational awareness, you know, to the general public that they could understand 
what is refugee, why they are here, and what their roles. You know, I think it's a good idea. Hi, my name is Sabrine, and I'm Syrian. I think the top three human rights problems in Syria are probably lack of freedom of speech, um, freedom of political association, and also freedom of assembly. It's basically been the one party for the last 40 years or so, and as I said, because there isn't that freedom of political association, um, the elections have, haven't been free. My grandfather, actually in the, I think it was the 60s, um, he was, he came out through the skilled migration scheme. I'm a fighter, so for me, when I, when I get discriminated against or I get told that I can't do something, then I'm going to go out and show you that I can. So when I get told that you're a woman, you're oppressed, you, you're not capable of doing anything, then that kind of spurred me on to say, OK, I'm going to set up a project or an organisation to change the world. And so that's what I did. And for the last four or five years, I've been running the project called Green Scarf Day, which aims to raise money and empower women who have been disempowered in societies overseas where women don't have any rights.